Hi there! I'm here today with a pair of my crested geckos and you might notice that both of these crested geckos are missing their tails. That's one of the things that I worry the most about when it comes to reptile keeping are lizards that can drop their tails and both of these have done this to me under slightly different circumstances and with this one that I'm holding right now it actually happened just the other day. I want to talk to you a little bit more about tail loss, which is called tail autotomy. And, and I want to answer a few questions, namely who, what, where, when, why, and what do I do? So, I want to start out with who, and who are these two? These are the culprits. I haven't honestly had very many lizards drop their tails in my life, but these two have both done it. Uh, this one is one that I actually hatched myself uh, and this one here is one that I raised up from a baby and they both had tails when I got them and now they don't. I want to talk to you about what happens when you drop a tail. So what happens, and this is kind of an amazing thing because as it turns out anything with a tail can lose its tail but you know that with lizards and just a few other animals tail loss is more than just you can get your tail cut off or pulled off. You know, you can pull the tiger's tail, if you pull it hard enough, it'll come off. But lizards can decide, I think I just want to drop my tail now. And that's actually what happened with both of these guys. This one, he dropped his tail while I was moving. And that's fairly understandable. It was a high stress thing. And Lizards can just decide, hey, I'm stressed out, I'm freaked out, I think I might be in trouble, and off goes the tail, I'm out of here. And that's what happened. I got done with the move, opened up his enclosure, tail was gone, and that was a big bummer. This guy did something I've never seen happen before, which was he was all by himself in his enclosure, totally healthy, totally happy. I just came in one day, and his tail was off. I have no idea why he made this decision, but something must have stressed him out, at least for a very short time, and once it's gone, it's gone. This, generally speaking, will only happen when they are freaked out, when they are frightened. Because dropping your tail, even though it's something they can do, and it's something that they do fairly easily, they've got special muscles that they contract just to pop that tail off, and then they've got other muscles that close off all Whoa! That's something else I should mention. They've got other muscles that they contract to close off their blood vessels so they don't lose any blood. And actually, they tend to heal up really, really well from dropping a tail. But something worth mentioning with crested geckos is that the tail is something that they actually use as a, a, as a break, something to catch themselves. And so in the weeks after they drop a tail, Sometimes they will make a jump like that one that we saw and they'll overestimate how well they can stop and this one just showed us that sometimes they have no ability to stop for a little bit and then they realize I don't have a tail anymore and they start catching themselves with their back legs and all as well but for a little bit they get to be pretty lousy little jumpers. Like I was saying though, they drop the tail when they feel threatened. It can also happen if a gecko is very sick or something like that then you've got other concerns. But generally speaking, it's going to be because that tail gets grabbed, pinched, or they just get freaked out by a vacuum cleaner or something like that, and they just decide to drop it. And once they drop it, that tail goes ballistic. It flops around and is jumping all over the place. And this might give you a little window into why they would ever do this, because dropping your tail isn't free. Some lizards, not crested geckos, but most lizards can grow that tail back to some degree. It'll never be quite like it was, but it'll be fairly similar, but that takes energy. A lot of lizards store fat in their tail, and dropping your tail is a real big cost to pay but it's not quite as expensive as getting eaten by something. And so, if they can drop that tail and it can freak out and flop around and draw the attention of whatever is chasing them while they get away, dropping your tail is a good idea. And so they do this. In captivity, generally speaking, they're not going to get eaten and it's just a bummer. But I want to talk to you about what to do if and when it happens to you. If you keep enough lizards, that can drop their tails. Sooner or later, somebody's going to do it. So what then? Generally speaking, the lizards will heal up very well 
all by themselves. One thing that uh, I tend to do that I think is a very good practice is to get them away from the substrate that was in their enclosure and to just put them on paper towels for a week or two while, while the base of the tail heals up and also to avoid handling them in, in the days following the tail drop. They dropped it because they were stressed for some reason and so try to minimize stress on them. If you're really concerned, you can put a little bit of antibiotic ointment in it, but make sure it doesn't have other things like, like numbing agents that could potentially do damage and endanger your pets. And then just keep an eye on it. If it's not healing up well or if it's starting to ooze, something like that, then you might want to see a veterinarian. But generally speaking, it's going to heal up just fine. That's actually why I brought this gecko as well, because his tail healed up quite a long time ago. Crested geckos never grow it back, but they do get this little bumpy protrusion off the end once that tail is all healed up and ready to go. Uh, people call them frog butts because it's kind of got that little trace of a tail sort of like when a frog has reabsorbed its tail. And then your crested gecko is going to live happily ever after, now tailless. And honestly, I hate the moment when the tail is dropped and it makes me feel so sad. And then I realize I like this gecko better now because the one thing that I worry about the most, I don't have to worry about anymore. I hope this doesn't happen to you, but I have a feeling at some point it will. Just be prepared. No, it's not the end of the world. Your gecko will be fine and they will be beautiful and wonderful and just help them have a, as good an experience as they can following that traumatic event and everything will be great. As always, like and subscribe and we hope to see you real soon. Get rid of the yeah. Oh, Is it close off? Whoa! When the tail is dropped, that tail... And once they drop it... That's creepy. You're it's like playing gross. with its appendage. If you put like little sunglasses on it, it would look like a face.